Hello, Leah. Good morning. Hello, Allison. <laughs> uh, we said we were going to introduce ourselves, and we, we did. <laughs> we did. So I'll go first. Yes. Hello, I'm Leah. I'm the coordinator of adult services at Fairfield County District Library. So I get to do all the fun stuff for adults. Um, so basically all the library stuff that's not the kids department. So <laughs> <laughs> or, or circulation where they check you out. But yeah, mm -hmm. all the other stuff. Well, I am Allison. I am the technical services librarian at Fairfield County. And so I do a lot of the behind the scenes things when it comes to receiving and processing materials. It is, in my humble opinion, the best job in the world. And um, I get to see every new thing. And it's just, it is just, it is the perfect, it is the perfect job for me. I am very jealous of that, and I love visiting you where you work and seeing all the new items. Good right. morning, Andrea. It's great to yeah. be back. Good morning, so nice How are you? To have you back, Leah. It's really nice to see you again. We've had, I mean, we've been on and off like the past, I feel like the past yeah. two months have been kind of in and out with one of us not being here, the other not being here, and then we'll both be there for like one week. And so it is yeah. very nice to be together again before the end of the year. Um, yeah, Good morning, Audrey. Uh, so it's just nice. It's nice to see you and and to yeah. like I said, we've only had a couple shows before the end of the year, really. And mm -hmm. I, it, it's hard to believe that 2020 is morning, Judith. That 2020 is like finally coming to an end because it feels like it is. It's really weird because it seems like in one respect time has gone so fast. And another, like, it has stood still. Like, mm -hmm. I never know where I am. And, like, it doesn't help that the weather has been all over the place, too. Yeah. Like, one day it's, you know, 30 degrees. The next day it's 70. It's just like, right. what, what is happening? <laughs> right. So, yeah. And I know for me, 2020 does seem, it, it for me, it's, it's more of a, I mean, yes, obviously a lot has happened, but it's more of a time standing still situation because in my personal life, almost nothing has happened. And right. so you, those markers that you typically use yeah. here haven't really like happened. Or holidays yeah. with families, like those yeah. aren't happening the way they do in a normal year. So yeah, it's yeah. Been very weird. Hi, Laura. Yeah. Nevieri. <laughs> never -ary. never, -ary. never -ary. I like that. <laughs> that works. That, yeah. That, uh, January, February, never -ary. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so that is kind of how it's been for me is just sort of like, because I, like, I saw someone posting, you know, like post something, you know, good and happy that happened to you this year because it hasn't all been bad or whatever. And I'm looking down and I'm like, like trying to think back through my year and I mean, really, uh, not much has happened. Like, I don't really even have, you know, I don't know. It, it really doesn't feel like, yeah. Holly uh, says that she, uh, your your mug made her hungry, or no, oh. she was hangry. Yeah. <laughs> Donuts. Yes. I know. I know. It does the same thing to me, especially this one with the chocolate icing and the sprinkles on top. I just want it to be real. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm very jealous. I I I I need a donut. That sounds really good this morning. Yeah, we are having um like our holiday party at uh, my branch next week. We've got we're we're closed to the public, so we don't have to have it in the break room. So we can spread out, you know, and bring the safe things. And I say party, and by that I mean we're bringing in food and eating it. Um, that's yeah. all any of us ever want to be doing. Um, right. And so, you know, we'll bring things that we're not sharing utensils and that kind of thing. We can kind of spread it out so we don't all, because our break room's pretty small. And normally, in a normal year for a holiday party, we've got like nine crock pots going and we're all crammed in there and it's like really hot. So we're not going to be doing that this year. And this year we're going to do a breakfast and uh, I'm going to bring in donuts. So nice. Yeah. That's one of those nice things that's just like, you know, you put a little napkin on your hand, you pull it out, and that it's all safe. Yeah. And uh, Holly says that Donut World is the best, and I love Donut World. Yes, I, that is where the donuts will be coming from. Is Donut World, um, yeah. and because I live, I also live close to Donut World, so like I'm it's I'm the Donut World ambassador. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, if you need Donut World donuts, it's me that picks them up on the way in. So although those days when I'm craving both donuts and ice, like I'm craving to. Usually it's my mom who's craving, craving donuts and I'm craving ice cream. Gypsy Joe's has both. So that's also very convenient. You yes. Know? Then you can. I go to both frequently. So, but yeah. I you can it. make a donut Sunday with a donut on the bottom and then ice cream on the top. <laughs> donut Sunday. Yeah. Um, and don't don't it isn't a party without food. <laughs> right. Yeah, and Christmas is Jolly Pirate. Yes, Jolly Pirate. There is there is still a Jolly Pirate. Um, Newark, right? Well, there's one, I don't know. I, there's one closer to that, because I have a friend who gets Jolly Pirate donuts occasionally, and um, she says it still smells the same. <laughs> <laughs> I like the little boxes that look like treasure chests, don't they? Yeah. I oh, probably... A Jolly Pirate, but I enjoy We it. used to have a Jolly Pirate here in Lancaster, and... Um, that's that was where yeah Reynoldsburg that's the one my friend goes to is the one in Reynoldsburg okay yeah. I think the one I went to was in Newark okay yeah well we used to have one here over on Memorial and but alas um oh my girls have been loving the Hartwood Hotel book series I'm not familiar with that I am not either give us more information yeah I don't know that one it's probably youth so she says it's her her girls have been reading it i will will confess that i am often out of the loop on kids stuff so Mm -hmm. audrey can probably tell us more about that (laughs) she knows it all Uh, yeah oh tara knows the jolly pirate locations (laughs) yeah she knows um the donut shop that used to be in the mill she loved that place as a kid I didn't know that there was a donut shop there. I am learning so much. I need so much more information about so many things today already. Yeah. While we're while we're waiting on Hartwood Hotel book information, you mentioned kids stuff. Can I talk about a kids book real quick Absolutely. that I think um, everyone on here? Oh, I don't want to say that. I want to say everyone on here needs this. I'm saying many anyone could need this book. Most use this book. Yeah. Um, it is a it is technically a children's book. It is a graphic novel. It is a nonfiction graphic novel called So Embarrassing, Awkward Moments and How to Get Through Them. And let me tell you, we uh, it covers all the awkward moments one could think of in comic format. Sometimes it's the, all the comics are, are different. Sometimes it's more story-ish, sometimes it's more step-by-step-ish. And it covers just all the things that still plague us. It covers when you wave at somebody and then it turns out it's not the person who you thought and then it also covers when someone waves at you and you wave back and then it turns out they weren't waving at you at all and it explains why that's embarrassing what that kind of makes you feel inside and how you can overcome it it talks about food in the teeth if you see someone who has food in their teeth and it explains why you feel embarrassed when you see that and how you struggle with it and how the best thing to do is just tell them because you would be embarrassed to find out later. It goes through both sides of the scenario and it just, it was a really, it's a really good book. And I feel like there are a lot of people who could continue to benefit from hearing these things happen to everybody and understanding why they make you feel embarrassed will help you have control of the situation. Yes. But I want to say, you shouldn't be seeing food in anyone's teeth. You should be wearing your mask. <laughs> That's a good point. Mouths should not be exposed at any point these right. days, except yeah. here on our show. But hopefully, um, we don't have to do in our show. Holly said that that is uh, uh, Kaylee George was the author of that, and um, Tara said it is really good. Um, or maybe it was Laura. There's Laura's one- the, the hotel series. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I was reading the, the the thing just as it scrolled off the page. So yes. I apologize. Um, and Holly needs that book. That's who, that's what Holly needs. That um, <laughs> few rooms for animals. Finest hotel for forest around. Okay. That's the Hartwood Hotel summary. Oh, okay. 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 I gotcha. That is really cool. So it's like an animal hotel with a season, with a book for each season, it looks like. 
That is awesome. We need a Zoom edition for how to navigate. days because they spend right. plenty of time on the internet yeah. for school. So another one on here was even um, when like you go to someone's house to like spend the night or for a party or something and they, they like do things differently than you do. Like they eat food that you aren't used to eating and you're afraid you're not going to like it, you know, and it just, the way that they describe it really brought me back to like when you're a kid and everything does feel really, really, it feels like the worst thing that could happen. Like going to someone's house, they're serving food that you think is gross is literally the worst thing that could happen to you in that moment is what it feels like. And thankfully as an adult, those things don't have such gravity anymore, mm -hmm. but they're still awkward. And I feel like the book is still relevant, even though it doesn't feel life ending. Yeah. 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 It's very awkward. And like when I moved to Japan, um, I spent a week living at my boss's house because like that's just post the title and author of that mm -hmm. graphic novel. Yes, we will do that. Yes. Um, I, I spent a week, the first week at my, my boss's house before my, my apartment was ready. And um, it's very awkward when it's your boss, especially because sure. you know, any mistake yeah. you made, it's, it's your boss. But right. um, I was like, I got up early and I was like, oh, oh, I will go shower and get that out of the way so that I'm not like in anyone's way. And I get to the bathroom and I, you know, I'm like, I could turn on the water. I'm like, I don't know how to get the water hot. Like I tried everything. Oh, no. because, like, it, it's just different. You have to turn on the, 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 the gas mm -hmm. for the, because it's a tankless water system. And it just, yeah. I couldn't be out. So I took a very cold shower that first day. <laughs> Yes. I was too embarrassed to go back. Yes. yes. I mean, it's all, we all have so many things like that in our lives and we will post it. But Sarah, just since you're here and I'm here, it's called So Embarrassing Awkward Moments and How to Get Through Them. And the author is Sharice Harper. Um, so I'll show you the cover one more time, but we will post it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the author says on the back, I made this book because embarrassment is complicated, but the more you understand something, the better you can control it. And that is wonderful. There's a section on body smells. There's a section on you spill. Uh, oh no. Oh my gosh, this happened to me. I haven't seen this page yet. When you get home and you realize the size sticker is on your pants. That happened to me once. Oh my gosh. Um, we were, I was with some friends and we were going to go see Harry Potter and the first Harry Potter of the Deathly Hallows. And, um, we were eating, we were eating at five guys, we we're eating burgers. And my friend and I had just been shopping that day and I just bought this new pair of jeans mm -hmm. and we had just bought matching boots, booties. And so I'm like walking back up to the counter to get my, <laughs> to get my burger at five guys. And I sit back down. She's like, okay. I don't want you to freak out, but <laughs> you still have the size sticker down the back of your thigh. And I was like, oh. actually, I approached a woman in the library one day, like she came in and she went over, she got on her computer and I was like, I'm going to tell her. So no one else sees it. So I walked over to her and I told her that, you know, she still had the size sticker down the back of her, her leg. And she was so embarrassed, but she thanked me for telling her. And then like, Two or three months later, she started working at the library, but we still to this day laugh about it. Um, Cindy, Cindy and I, she's like, she's like, that's how we met when you. Oh my gosh. I fully believe in, in telling people, as long as you're, you know, delicate and not a jerk about it. Um, yeah. I, and I want to be told to, I would much rather be someone come up and be like, Hey, just so you know, to, you know, then yeah. go around all day and think about how many people saw me that way. So yeah. I know it's tough, though. It's hard to do that, though. It's embarrassing to tell someone that. Yes, like I felt embarrassing it, and I like why? Right. I don't know. Just like when someone interviews at the library, like and I sit in on the interview, I'm nervous. Like I'm, mm -hmm. uh, why am I nervous? I don't know. Um, okay. Laura said that she loved using the Dawes Arboretum membership. Awesome. Great. Those are those are um, going out. Okay. Um, not getting great use. This isn't the best time of year for it, but those are awesome. You can check out um, a Dawes Arboretum membership and you can borrow it for two weeks and go and visit um, the Arboretum mm -hmm. and bring it back to the library, but you yeah. get to be free. So that's awesome. You can go as many times as you want in that two weeks. 
And, um, oh, but make sure that was the other thing. Make sure you call, I believe they're still requiring reservations for the foreseeable future so that they can get an idea of how many people are there for COVID restrictions and things like that. So you do have to call, but you can use it as many times as you want in that two weeks. And we don't have any fines. So if you return it a day or two late, that's okay too. <laughs> don't encourage them to keep it longer out. <laughs> I know, I know. But just sometimes you have that sense of like panic, right. like we didn't get there the day or the reservations were full this day. We can only yeah. go Sunday and it's due Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, things are, things are so weird. Like I, I go, before I go anywhere, I visit their website now because of COVID. And it's like, are they still open? What time do they close? Like things are closing so much earlier. And it's really yes. awesome. like right now it's, it's the Christmas season and you, you know, used to be, everything was open really late. Um, you could go shopping very late and now yeah. you can't do that. Like the no. days of COVID have changed everything. So, right. Right. I think I might be wrong about this, but isn't the mall only open to like seven? I, or something? I think so. I, I, I saw someone complaining they were closed at six. So I'm not even oh. sure. Well, I'm, I I think I thought that maybe on the weekday it was seven, just because you know I stopped there after work one day and I was like, man, you know, I kind of gotta like make sure I get here. Right. Um, and yeah. you're right here in Christmas time. That's the time when you're like, well, it's ten thirty. I can probably still run out and do my shopping. Um, Not these yeah. days. Yeah, it's it's well, very strange. So I know. different world. Well. What else? Um, I do have, I have, I feel like I've talked a lot, but I do have something else when we're talking about staying up late. Can I yes. do one more thing? Um, <laughs> yeah. so I was up late last night reading, which normally I'm a, like, it's very, sleep is very important to me. I just, I turn off the light and go to bed. Um, but I was up reading and laughing about this book. And I will warn you, there is a bit of bad language in the title. Um, so I'll hold it up here. Um, but it's Lindy West's new book of movie reviews. And um, so basically it's all humorous. It's just like her kind of like, she does summaries of movies that she likes and doesn't like. She just mm -hmm. tells you the story of it. It is very, very funny. She points out all the plot holes and, but again, in a really like loving and lighthearted way, um, not, it's not, it's not a serious book of reviews, um, but it is really entertaining. And especially for something that you really, really like, um, okay. So what I'm getting at, basically she writes one about Harry Potter and it like, I just lost it. I was laughing so hard and I'm a gigantic Harry Potter fan, but when you love something so much, you also know all the bad things about it right. too. And like her description of just all the many plot holes in Harry Potter was hilarious to me. The way that she writes yeah. about it was really funny. And sometimes I haven't read all the book, all the, or I haven't seen all the movies that she writes about, but it was still really entertaining to read about them. Um, and I was just, I was laughing so hard. I was crying. I, my neighbors probably thought I was sobbing or something, but it just was like, and I have not laughed, like, it just, it, I've not laughed like that in a long time from something that I've read, especially. And so if you're a fan of movies and a fan of just like irreverent commentary, we'll call it, um, I would definitely recommend Shit Actually by Lindy West. Um, Love Actually is one of the movies in here that she covers. Um, I do love Love Actually. Um, but it was really good. And I was up very late reading that last night. What did you say about Love Actually? I missed that part I was reading. It is one of the movies in here that she talks okay. about. Um, but, and I said, I do love that movie, but she also has some points. <laughs> um, that, that I, I'm going to have to read something like that after my current read. I'm reading, yeah. um, what is it called? True Story, a novel, which I just think is the best title ever. Um, but it's it's very not a happy book. <laughs> um, so, well, I'm not very far into it. I don't know how it goes, but it's it's um, yeah, it's it's so far. One of the characters has a drinking problem, and the other character is like overcoming a traumatic incident. Um, mm -hmm. Caitlin Petty is the author. Um, true story, a novel. <laughs> <laughs> Kate Reed Petty. Um, I'm, 
not sure how I'm feeling about it. Like, I feel bad, like, mentioning a book that I'm, like, not giving a glowing review. But, like, I feel like it's very well written. I just, mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, as we've said before, you know, a book for every reader and all that jazz. So just because it wasn't for you doesn't mean it's not a book for someone else or not a good yeah. book. Sometimes it is a bad book. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> just because you're not enjoying it. And maybe that's not the type of thing you like to read either. You know, you do read like dark and gory things. I, I do read dark and gory. This is more... I don't know. Like, yeah. We have a I, couple comments about about books that uh, Tara says the henna artist. She recently read that and needs a funny book now. And Andrea said she was reminded of the woman in the window. I really enjoyed the woman in the window. Thrilling and exciting, but very sad, she says. And um, I really liked the atmosphere of the woman in the window like almost like the Hitchcockian. She's watching all these like old movies and stuff and just something about, I could just feel there was like an atmosphere when I was reading it. And that's what I liked most about woman in the window. I feel like this story has like, you're, you're getting a story like third hand, like mm -hmm. you don't know the truth of what happened. So it's like, well, what really happened? I, mm -hmm. cause you're getting the story from someone who got the story from someone else. So, mm -hmm. and even like the, the person who it happened to doesn't know what happened because they were unconscious. So it's like, okay. yeah, it's, it's, it's story, a novel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's very, it's, it, it's very good. I just, I, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Yeah. Well, that takes time. Andrea says that the movie of woman in the window uh, looks crazy. I have not seen it. If anyone else has seen it, comment. Um, and Audrey says, I've just started Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolk, who I love, and it's really well written, but so far it's bringing me down. <laughs> so it sounds, like every, it sounds like there's there's multiple of those experiences happening right now. I, I, think, I think like 2020 just might not be the year for a heavy book. I think it yeah. might be the year for fluff. And speaking of 2020, um, did you hear that they canceled the... Um, bad sex in books award like the, every year there's a award this given is out not an award i'm familiar with Leah. In books because some of them are horrible right so this year they canceled it because it's 2020 we don't need any more bad stuff so that this is the news. 20 everything about what you're saying is news to my ears <laughs> you didn't know that this award was given out every year i did not it it, it that, is that is uh, not a 586 field that we put in bibliographic records where we put when it's won an award. That's not one of those that we put in. We limit that to like, you know, you should Ohio yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Melanie says she's refusing to read any harder books right now because it's then can I give one more recommendation because okay. of something lighthearted? Um, when, a couple weeks ago, I said I held up a book by Rachel Bloom. I want to be where the normal people are. I love um, that, that book. That had like that kind of 80s style cover. I listened to the audio. It's only five hours long, I think. Um, she reads it and the, it was it was really entertaining. Um, again, more on like the crasser side or whatever, but it was really um fun and funny and she is you know her show was like a musical type of show so some of the chapters she actually even sings there's a chapter that's like formatted as a musical she performs that one um and if you're looking for something lighthearted, she you know she discusses um it's just kind of like a little mini memoir and stuff so she talks mm -hmm. you know about her struggles with anxiety and you know things her love life things that have happened but it's all really entertaining and so if you're looking especially for something short five hours that's like right almost nothing. So um, I would recommend that too, if you want something that's just going to brighten, brighten things. I might, I might have to turn to that. I need something light and funny. And Andrea says um, that I should follow the subreddit called men writing women. Um, if you want some. <laughs> yeah. I have seen some examples, like men really don't understand how women work. Like that's just, it seems to be that's that's great. That is good to know that that Reddit exists. That's very funny to hear. Um, and it looks like we've also posted uh, a link to the award. 
um, which Audrey suggests that maybe 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 we should make note of. Hard pass, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't believe that um, we just linked to that. So <laughs> <laughs> Becky's not going to want to do this show anymore. Uh, I, this is our final. This is our final episode, guys. <laughs> Unplanned, but um, <laughs> it's been great. It's been nice. Pulling the cord. <laughs> so. <laughs> so what else do we have? Do you know <laughs> the average number of hours Americans spend reading every day, every week? You know, I don't. I didn't write that one down. <laughs> Five hours and 42 minutes. Oh, I read more than that a week, I bet. Me too. Um, I said on average, mm -hmm. um, which we're number 22. That is kind of disappointing. Yeah. India is number one. They read 10 hours and 42 minutes a week. Wow. Right? Yeah. So that, I think number is even probably. <laughs> sorry, Audrey says, sorry, Audrey says, we do reference. These are just reference questions. That is a very good point. We do. Yes. Yes. You wanted to know this award, this award exists. Here's, here's the information about it. Right. Winners. No 2020. Oh, and, then, uh, and then here's the, it looks like we posted the infographic for these um, these reading statistics, which are really interesting because the gist of the article is that in 2020, reading habits did change and people read more for mm -hmm. reasons that are obvious. Um, but one interesting part of it is that book sales in many places went down because people were not physically shopping, yet reading still went up because they were either doing digital things, they might have been doing things from their library, curbside pickup or digital library books, or perhaps like me, they were like, okay, well, I guess I'll read one of the 5,000 books I have at home. Um, so, you know. I do that, I buy books and I just sit there and I, I don't read them. But did you see in New Zealand, um, applications for digital library cards increased by 50%? Like That's I awesome. thought that was amazing. Yeah. So we definitely, we definitely issued our fair share of digital and we continue to yes. uh, digital cards because there are important pieces of information that we need to verify to make sure that you've gotten that, that your card, you're really you and someone isn't opening a card, you know, that isn't you and all those kinds of things. So we issue these digital cards that you can use our digital resources, even without presenting, you know, yeah. um, everything that we need to verify. And so we've issued a lot of those since the mm -hmm. pandemic began. So it's it's been, um, and Audrey says she's done a lot of rereading this year too. Right. Yeah. I, I I did a lot of that. Like I had a period of time there where I couldn't get into books. Like I just I couldn't mm. focus enough. I couldn't read, and I got back into it by rereading like books that I knew I enjoyed and knew brought me comfort. Like those ones. Yeah. Like I was able to get into those, and then. <clears throat> on to new stuff but yeah, yeah. there I think March I, I think I, that really I don't think I read a single book in April really and see yeah. I read so many books in April people I think everyone kind of had like a one way or the other track with that and I read I was one of the people who read so much but I know there are a lot of people who also who like just had a hard time focusing at, or just getting into it and like you said and like Audrey said probably a lot of people did kind of get back into things by rereading re and reading comfort things. For whatever reason, I can't seem to reread stuff very successfully. There's just a few books that I will reread and Harry Potter, the Harry Potter series is one of them. I reread the, I've reread The Great Gatsby several times, but like a lot of books, I don't know, I, which it then also doesn't make sense. Why do I continue to buy them and feel like I need to keep them? But I do, <laughs> if I read a book and I like it, I buy it, so I own it, um, but I just, for whatever reason, I just have a hard time rereading. Yes. Um, did you know there is a unofficial prequel to The Great Gatsby coming out in January? It's called Nick. Um, I don't know. Um, 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 Michael Ferris Smith has okay. a book coming out. It's, it's called Nick. It's, okay. So it's He's, yeah. 
and the cover looks very like the Great Gatsby cover. It kind of puts you in that mind frame. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's interesting. Thank you for telling me about that. That does not ring a bell. So I wrote that down and I will uh, put myself on hold for that. And I'll either like it or I will really not like it and I won't finish it. I don't always love prequels written by other people. Um, right. I think they can dramatically change a story and I don't always appreciate that. Like I loved Jane Eyre. I loved it. And um, like, you know, I had this English class and we had to read Jane Eyre and, and oh my God, I love that book. Mm -hmm. And then the next book we had to read was The Wide Sargasso Sea um, by Jane Reese or something yeah. like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Totally changed. Like I felt so much. But it's not. It's, it has nothing to do. It's just someone's interpretation. It shouldn't change anything about the first, the original I book. Like, I don't care if she tried it. Yes, but I was. Angry. I love White Sargasso Sea, but I just don't. <laughs> I don't think it doesn't impact the original for me at all. Like it's just someone's artistic interpretation, and it's basically like fan fiction. It's like they're thinking about what this would be. They're taking a, a new spin on it, and it doesn't offend me. I'm the same way about movies made from books. It has nothing to do with the book. It's just an interpretation. I don't get upset about it. I, it just, it, to me, it was just like, I felt like she destroyed that character. And mm -hmm. I liked him in the first book, and I hated him in, in that book. Like it just like, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. Well, just pretend it's something completely different. It's a totally different story. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, I, and it's funny you mentioned that because I'm listening to an audiobook right now. It's an ARC. It's an advanced reader audiobook, an advanced reading copy of an audiobook. And um, it's called The Wife Upstairs. And mm -hmm. so you read it. Um, and it is based on Jane Eyre. It's a, you know, uses that as inspiration in modern day. Um, so it's like set in the South and, uh, Rochester is like this, you know, widower and there's this dog walker named Jane and, you know, they get together and, you know, his wife. So I don't know exactly where it, it's very so, so for me, it's not my genre. Um, the only reason why I would continue it is because of the connection to Jane Eyre. And so I'm just interested to see how it all plays out, um, in this instance. But, um, as far as like, you know, unreliable narrator, women on the edge type of book it's probably pretty like same as everything else but um it's just funny that you mentioned that because that's exactly everything that's going into this audiobook i'm listening to <laughs> isn't it funny how that happens it's like yes. weird connections that you yes. find out there in the world um yes. a couple comments um sure. um tara found audiobooks helped her get back into reading me too. I, I love me some audiobooks. And Andrea said that speaking of rereads, Ready Player One is a favorite reread. So I hope you reread that before Ready Player Two came out last <laughs> week or a couple weeks ago. Um, <laughs> and Audrey agreed that rereading books that she already knew she liked got her back into it. Um, there's a YA book coming out that's being built, built as a gender bent version of the Great Gatsby, where the characters are women. Interesting. Ooh, interesting. Um, and Mary posted her favorite reference to Jane Eyre. Um, <laughs> feminist theory. Yeah, that sounds right, Mary. Um, <laughs> Melanie likes listening to Beatrix Potter audios. Oh, that sounds very gentle. When I was when I was a kid, um, I had a lot of trouble reading. It wasn't um, um, I had like this weird eye thing going on. Like they had to test me for dyslexia and I wasn't dyslexic. Um, and the doctor said I would grow out of it and I did, but like I, I was constantly flipping letters backwards, mm -hmm. but it wasn't dyslexia. Like I remember we had a, a spelling test all because of me where every word on the spelling test started with the letter D and my page had D's and B's and P's and you know, they did not all, even though I knew every word started with the letter D. Because mm. that's, I just, I, I would flip yeah. letters and I write them wrong. Mm. I can still to this day write backwards very easily. But <laughs> that's a um, skill. Right? Where was I going with this? I have oh, no idea. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> so reading was very difficult for me and I hated it, hated it when I was little. And um, so my mom would pay me to read like actual. I got paid to read. Oh, hard cash? I got, 
I got a quarter for every book I read. And mm. I love the little Beatrix Potter books. Like they were just this little size, these tiny little hardbacks that were just, they fit in your hand so well when you're in first grade. Like it was, mm. so I would go and I would check those out every, <laughs> every week. <laughs> I, I, right? I get a couple of those. So um, <laughs> cute. And Andrea said she's already read Ready Player Two and she does recommend it. Nice. I bought that book for my nephew for his birthday. So because he well, liked thank the, you for the recommendation. Like yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Have we hit oh and she says that her parents own a set of the Beatrix Potter books that are that size. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I loved those books when I was yeah. little. Perfect size. I loved them. But yes, that was my way <laughs> of getting of making cold hard cash, of making <laughs> making it rain. <laughs> and I feel like I still get paid to read only better than a quarter now. <laughs> Man, if only we got paid to read. I would love that. But yeah. I'm around, it's like water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Like I'm surrounded by books, but I have other stuff I need to do and I can't read. Right. So I check them all out. I bring <laughs> them home. I read one or two of them and then I return the rest in three weeks. And they it back and then eventually they go back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking that a great segment for this show would be me showing all the books I'm returning this week that I haven't read. Like I'm sending this one back. It looks great. Don't have time. Sending this one back. Didn't look at a single recipe. <laughs> just... We should totally do that. <laughs> this is a check out that I never crack open. It's I know. And it's just because there's so many, I'm inundated. There's so much great stuff to choose from. It's all right there in front of me. And I'm like, oh, I want to check this out. I want to check this out. And it just, I still only have the same number of hours as everybody else. Yes. Yeah. Like they just, I know yeah, they, it. they collect dust and then they go back. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, maybe we can, uh, we can feature everything we haven't, we have no way to recommend because we haven't read it. Um, we're just sending it back. And they go back late because um, even though I'm at the library every day, it's not until I get that, like, this book is overdue. Please give it back or we're going to charge you email. <laughs> That's when it goes back. <laughs> I'll admit it. I'm one of those people. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes librarians are the worst patrons. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, did, I did have have someone find me a book based on the, the cover of the book. I'm like, I don't know the author. I don't know the title, um, but I want to read this book. It had skeleton keys on the cover. And Shannon was like, oh, something about somebody think. I don't know. She knew exactly what book oh I was God. talking about. <laughs> She, That's she great. Author, she knew right where it was on the shelf and she grabbed it for me. And I was like, you're the best librarian ever. That is wonderful. I mean, and that's the thing, you know, librarians are, are library patrons too. We also check out books. We also accidentally lose them. We also don't remember the name of them. And, you know, we also have reference questions, call <laughs> and ask. And Secret Life of Jeremy Fink, Melanie says. Yes. I knew Fink was in the name. Uh, Melanie got it uh, by Whitney Moss. <laughs> Melanie would have found it for me too. Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man, so. yeah. We just have so much. You just kind of accumulate so much stuff in your head after a while. Yes. Audrey took my Fink and was recommending Wolf, asking if it was Wolfgang Fink, but that wasn't it. Melanie got it. Secret Life of Jeremy Fink. I loved that book. It was a wonderful book. Read it if you've got a chance. And I was only attracted to it because there were skeleton keys on the cover and I love me some skeleton keys. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I feel like we have been talking a lot about... Oh no, the Jeremy Fink thing is continuing. Oh, the, the name is wrong. It's not the secret life. It's like the wondrous life or the... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It'll have to solve. We'll resolve it. Hear me think is definitely. We'll figure it out. Well, it has Here been me. great to talk to you this week. It's been <laughs> nice to catch up again. And next yeah. week we'll be having our Christmas themed 
broadcast for whatever that means. <laughs> but however that turns out being, I don't know, but it will be our last one before the holiday because we will be closed on December 25th, which is our next show after that. So, And while well, I love you, Alex, I'm not going to skip Christmas yeah. with you. I know. And I know. And yeah, Christmas will be different this year, but not so different that we need to be doing lattes with librarians at 1030 on Christmas morning. So. I'll probably be sleeping still at 30 on Christmas morning. Um, and yeah. they're telling us that the show needs to be an hour. I think we could easily, easily cover an hour's worth of material. Because you know what the proof is? The proof that we could... The proof that we could easily cover an hour is that yesterday we were both late to a meeting that we had both <laughs> forgotten about because of something we were doing for this show. And oh, so, um, I just we were, is that my I computer? Know what stage of life you're in. It's not me. One of my tabs started playing a commercial. I apologize. That was very scary. That was very scary. Um, I don't know how that happened. But anyway, point is, we got so carried away with what we were doing for the show that we actually ended up both being late, me more than Leah, for a meeting that we had also both forgotten about. So that's the kind of week we've been having. But now it's at its end. <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. I suppose we should wrap it up and we'll get going. But it was great yeah, to be here all of you today. And um, yeah. We'll, we'll see you next Friday. If you have anything seasonal or festive to discuss next week or whatever, you can leave yeah. it in the comments this week as a suggestion or, or bring it with you next week. If you have like a, a book or a, I don't know, a movie, some, some type of festive thing, a recipe even to share next week. Ooh, next week. I think I'll have hot chocolate instead of coffee. That sounds good. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining Bye. us. <laughs> Bye.